When trying to test the soil's capacity to retain water, you can perform this experiment either at home or in the science lab or just watch me do it. <laughs> but to fulfill this experiment, you need to follow these particular steps. So with step one, you'll need to take five clear plastic water bottles that are pretty much straight on the sides and you're going to carefully, I repeat, carefully cut the upper third of the water bottle. Off. Step number two, you're going to take that top bottle that you just cut off and you're going to invert it or turn it upside down so that the lid is now facing downwards toward the table and you're going to secure it in place on top of the bottom of that water bottle. So the top part of this new um, bottle that looks kind of weird is going to act as a funnel. Step number three, make sure you line the funnel with some sort of thin papered filter. Right here I'm just going to use a regular coffee filter. Step number four, you're going to need to place a small amount of the soil sample into the funnel that's lined with a filter. Don't put too much, you don't want it to overflow and get all messy all over the place. Step number five, with this step, you're just going to need to measure some water into a graduated cylinder. I suggest using about 100 milliliters of water, but whatever measurement you use, it has to be the same with how you measure with all of your samples. So since I'm using 100 milliliters, make sure you do the same. Step number six, carefully pour that water over the soil. If it doesn't go down in time, just pour it in small batches because you don't want any to pour over your funnel and get wasted onto the top of the table. Step number seven, start timing this process with a stopwatch as soon as you pour the liquid water into the funnel. So you're gonna push start on your timer as soon as you start pouring. Step number eight, watch how that water starts making its way through the soil. So it'll start at the top of your funnel and make its way down and eventually it'll start dripping to the bottom of your bottle. Now, when only a few drops continue to drip from that paper funnel, stop the timer and record how long it took for that whole draining process. Remember, all of that liquid that fell down and that you can now see in the bottom bottle, that is all of the collected water. But on the other hand, all of the liquid that remains in the soil, so on the top part of your bottle, that is all of the retained water. So all of the water that has been collected and still remains in the soil. Moving on to step nine, this is when you'll need to carefully remove the top funnel from the bottom part of the bottle and you're gonna carefully pour all of that collected water into a new graduated cylinder. Step 10, you're gonna measure the amount of this collected water accurately as best as you can and record this measurement in milliliters. Step 11, you'll need to repeat this same procedure again using that same soil sample, but this time instead of using dry soil, like when you first placed your soil in the paper funnel, instead you'll be using all of that damp soil. So you'll be doing the same type of test but with wet damp soil instead.
and with step 12, you're going to need to make sure to repeat all of these experiment steps for all four remaining soil samples. So with sample B, you'll do it with the dry soil and then with the damp soil. And the same with your sample C soil. You'll need to find measurements for when the soil was dry and when the soil was damp and so on and so forth with sample D and E. Step 13. After you've recorded all the data entries for the dry and damp soils for all five soil samples, you can then complete some math calculations to figure out how much water was actually retained with each of the five samples. And lastly, step 14. Compare and contrast the recorded data in your chart. Doing so, this will help you as a scientist um, determine which sample retains the most water. What do you think? Which soil combination did the best job? And which would have the best ability to support the growth of plants. So looking at our data that we have filled in in the chart, we're able to see with each five of our samples how much water in the end our soils were able to hold on to and retain. 
and these were all with our dry samples so our soils had no water or liquid in them to begin with and then we did the experiment all over again with the same soils so now our soils started wet and you're able to see the difference in how much water was retained in all five samples so side to side let's see here is the first these are all our dry samples and then compared to all of our wet samples what conclusions can you make by looking at these different data points did the soils retain more water or less water when the soil themselves were dry or when they were wet what do you think?